we are on our way out of the Notch Hostel. It's sunny. It did rain last night because the surfaces are wet out here, but it's a beautiful day. Beautiful day. It's a Notch Hostel shuttle. Yes, we have too much. Too much. And Atomic starting the day with today. Beautiful blue sky should be great for Franconia Ridge. So let's hike northbound. This is the 0.9 Blue Blaze bike path that we have to do to get back to trail, but it's an easy paved trail. Already starting to have a little bit of knee pain climbing up this mini hill here. I started experiencing it for the first time coming down to Kinsman. So hopefully it's not too bad. All right now I'm just enjoying a beautiful walk along the beautiful bike path. It's just a really nice morning walk, beautiful weather, beautiful temperature, beautiful scenery. Good morning and welcome to the woods near the Appalachian Trail. We'll be back to the Appalachian Trail in just a moment. We are Stick the Eagle and we are hiking northbound from Springer Mountain, Georgia to Katahdin, Maine. And we are in New Hampshire's White Mountains today. We got off after the Kinsman at Franconia Notch. Not yesterday, but the day before. We took the day off yesterday because of weather and to let the body heal a little bit. And now today is supposed to be beautiful. So we are hiking Franconia Ridge today. So today is day 114 in the Appalachian Trail. And I'm so glad you joined in with us for today's journey. Whether you're new or whether you've been here for the first time today. Uh, let's enjoy hiking the Appalachian Trail together and keep hiking northbound. I'm super excited for Franconia Ridge today. I would highly, highly recommend the Notch Hostel. They have the best Wi-Fi I've seen since the Green Dragon. I think it's about the same speed. So that meant a lot to me. Hot showers that never are not hot because it runs off propane. And great staff, great shuttle service, laundry service done for you, great beds. They have a 30 person capacity really really a nice hostel it's at an affordable price it was actually cheaper than the green dragon too of course they don't include any meals so you have to provide your own meals so i guess that makes up for it but being in the northeast 50 dollars a night for a bunk that's pretty good just about back at the bridge where the at is one thing i like about this 0.9 mile road walk bike walk is that it helps me get a momentum going before I climb the hill. So it's actually really helpful for my mental perspective because I feel like I've already been walking fast and then I can take that momentum into the uphill rather than just starting right at the bottom of the hill. That's helpful. So thank you, Blue Blaze. Here's the bridge we got off on Thursday. Liberty Spring Trail is 50 yards. Blazes Bridge. River view. This is the Cascade Brook from the Cascade Brook Trail. Beautiful. So the Liberty Spring Trail goes up to the Liberty Spring, which is the last water source before Franconia Ridge until the Garfield campsite. So I'll probably get water at Liberty Spring. This will lead to the Liberty Spring and Franconia Ridge in less than three miles. Onward, northbound, AT. Not too bad in terms of upness, but it is a little bit rocky. And each time I step on a rock, sometimes to avoid this mud here, the bottom of my feet still hurt. So the rest of the day I did them some good, but they're still in pain a little bit. So still dealing with that, but it's okay. We're gonna find a way to focus on the positive things 
As so we're hiking the Appalachian Trail and the beautiful mountains, and it is a gorgeous day out here. So we have the Flume Side Trail there, and the Liberty Spring Trail, which is the Appalachian Trail. So we have to take that one, 2.3. The trail has been pretty good so far. It's rocky, but good terrain. I haven't really needed to plan my steps like I have the last couple of days in the lights. I am tempted to take the Flume side trail because I want to pick up 4,000 footers in New Hampshire now and Mount Flume is on the list. However, right now I'm doing a through hike of the Appalachian Trail. And if I did the Flume side trail, then cut over to Liberty, I'd be skipping out on part of the Appalachian Trail, which I can't do. So, I can always go back to Mount Flume later, another year, and pick it up if I get really serious about the 4,000 footers. Right now I'm just staring in disbelief at this trail in the White Mountains. <laughs> I love it though. Nice little tent spot by the creek here for one tent. And now we get some nice stone stairs. There were some day hikers who passed me with just a bottle of water, shorts, and a t-shirt. It's like, it might be warm down here, but do you know that the summit forecasts are expected to be in the low 40s and really windy? I hope they're prepared. We're starting to get a little steep here in the Liberty Springs Trail. That's all right, just one step in front of another. A guy just ran past me going up this hill. How do you run up this hill without turning your ankle? I don't even know. When others pass you on trail, especially that fast, you start to think about your own weaknesses, but then you remind yourself to not compare yourself to others and to hike your own hike and then what others are doing doesn't really matter at all. It's kind of just constant rock, walking up rocks. I was about to say rocking up rocks instead of walking. Kind of is rocking, rocking rocks. But steep and rocking rocks. <laughs> this wind has been something. The firs are still blocking it for now, but it's a cold wind. I might be putting my windbreaker on soon. I might be putting my gloves on too. Already it's down to mid 40s. A couple of my knees and some of my feet are screaming with every step up and every step on a rock. So I might have to pause. And my fingers are getting numb too. I think I need to put on my raincoat and my windbreakers and my gloves because my fingers are cold. I had hoped that in addition to waiting out the weather, the Zura would have helped fix whatever happened to my knees on my half climb, half tumble down Kinsman. So I did fall a few times and that's when my knees started really acting up after one of the falls. So I don't know, I think it's a combination of things. I knew my feet wouldn't get completely better on the Z one zero day, but I thought they'd feel a little bit better when I started climbing again. So many day hikers have passed me going up this hill. It's a Saturday, so it's a popular day. Honestly, I think I'm just having a hard time finding the energy as I used to, to just power up the hills, which is interesting. Why would my leg muscles feel weaker than they ever have after all the workouts I've done with them these past several months? I'm probably just worn out at this point. Liberty Springs. Ten site. I have a trickle of water here as a water source. This is the bear box storage area. Here are some of your tent platforms and there's rocks, I guess, that people use to stake out their guidelines. I think I'm going to put on some extra layers here because the temperature is now dangerously at 40 and thinking about getting below, I think. I pulled out my windbreaker, but I 
might, because I don't have a lot of elevation left and it's really windy, I think I might put on my green clothes underneath my windbreakers as an extra insulation layer, because I'm freezing. It's 10 o'clock, I'm dressed up, and I'm eating a roast beef sandwich here in a tent platform at my little break before I go above tree line into that windy wind. <laughs> There's the weather, summits. 40s with 20 to 35 mile per hour winds valley 70 that's the difference that's the top of the liberty springs trail this is the franconia ridge trail we have reached the franconia ridge yay first we're going to check out mount liberty point three spur and then point three back and then we'll go toward Lafayette. Thinking how I'm doing this by choice. It's not even part of the AT, but Mount Liberty is worth the side quest because I'm so close to it. There she is. Liberty is right there. Liberty. There's Lincoln. Moose Lock right there in front of us. And then we have South Kinsmen and North Kinsmen. Lock to South Kinsmen and North Kinsmen and Canaan. Down there is the Flume Visitor Center. That's where we started our day from. Hello, it was definitely windy up on Liberty, so that makes me look forward to the rest of the exposed tree line area. We're on Frontonia Ridge, and there's some nice pines along here. But anyway, nice to see Liberty. Gorgeous views. One of the runners who uh, just went by said he's trying to do all 48 4Ks in six days. So good luck to him. Looks like he's doing a good job so far. This is the area between Liberty and Little Haystack. Have a nice protection from the wind right here. This didn't happen all that long ago because the tree is still mostly green. There's Little Haystack Mountain right there. Little Haystack. Looks like it'll be a climb, but it's shorter than the others. It'll just help me gain altitude. I'm a little tired and I found a nice 
rock does sit on where there's room in the trail for someone to get by me if they come by. And I thought since I'm tired, I could use a little bit of chocolate. Some of the chocolate I packed away yesterday in this uh, Ziploc bag, my trail mix bag. I'm climbing little haystack mountain here and I feel just worn out. <laughs> oh, gonna keep climbing though. <sighs> I just wanted to share that moment with you. Little haystack, then a little tiny down, then Lincoln, then a little tiny down, and then Lafayette, then a big down. I find myself really not knowing what to wear because I'm really warming up climbing little haystack here because it's protected from the wind. The wind is coming from the other side. I know as soon as I go to the top, it'll be really cold again, but for the climb, I need to be shedding late. Ow, ow, tree. <sighs> I just hit myself in the head with a tree again. <sighs> just saying I need to wear layers and take them off and then put them back on again. Wow, I, I must not be paying attention as much as I usually do, because it must have something with a fatigue or whatever. I find that I'm not enjoying the hike as much as I want to or did, potentially, because I'm so worn out and I'm, I don't want to do it and continue it for the wrong reasons just to do it. This is a great ridge, beautiful views in this ridge. And then the presidential traverse is next, but I'm kind of glad that I'm leaving right now because I think I need this time off. At least we know what to expect in the whites now. This is what I've come to expect. I also almost tripped there while I stepped up looking at that view. I'm looking behind me. There's Liberty on the right and Flume on the left. Beautiful. Here we go, Franconia Ridge. We'll be above treeline again soon. Ah, you're a so much fun little haystack. Yes, you are. Hey, positives, there are a few bugs because of the wind. It's sunny, beautiful views. And I'm still in the Appalachian Trail, which we know and love. Well, well, look who's come out of the clouds, my friend. It's Mount Washington himself in the presidentials. This is my first official look at Mount Washington and he is gorgeous. And there's the whole valley we just walked between from Liberty to here. A little illegal campsite right there. You put somebody put sticks on there to say, hey, don't camp here. Wasn't that a gorgeous view of Mount Washington? Wow, this is why I love hiking. Because you see all these gorgeous views. Ah, oh, that gave me an adrenaline rush. I'm laughing because I'm so happy right now. Amazing. And this ridge is just beginning. This is a perfect day for Franconia Ridge. I'm so excited to have gotten that shot of Mount Washington. Wow. Look at that shot of Cannon Mountain right there. Oh, amazing. We just entered the Alpine Zone and prepare for some exposure. <laughs> I'm going to be putting back on my winter hat. Mosalak, the Kinsmans, and Canaan to the west. Little haystack. This is the top of Little Haystack Mountain. We're almost to Lincoln and then Lafayette's behind it. Over there. Of course, living out behind Garfield Ridge is Mount Washington.
I'll be safe in between there. And then the ridge line. And Washington! Washington. There we go. We're approaching the base of Lincoln here. We are going up Lincoln. This is up, up, down Lincoln. from the saddle here between Lincoln and Lafayette we're finally out of the wind a little bit
in the middle of trail right now where I had to sit down to get down a rock. That's my situation. <laughs> and I'm like, I had to sit down to get down. And then I just stayed here to eat a snack because I'm like, wow, I'm actually out of the wind for a moment. Thanks to these pine trees. And they even have a little bit of a view too because I'm still high up so I can see Garfield right over there. We are leaving the Alpine zone for now. Oh, <laughs> I was about to say another guy uh, just went past me in shorts and a t-shirt and I'm all here bundled up. <laughs> I just find that funny. More beautiful views as I make my way down here. Would you be bundled up in 43 degree weather with 43 mile per hour winds? I think I might be cold butted because I get cold very easily. <laughs> what kind of bird are you? Okay, you're gonna hide in the bushes. This is our way down. Very steep. I think we just lost a little bit of altitude there. I've just ascended a lot, but there, there he is. The Garfield Ridge shelter is on the other side of Mount Garfield. It looks a lot taller now that I've descended. I've found the saddle. There's the up and the other up. And there's even a nice stealth site in between, although it looks a little rocky and muddy. Garfield Ridge tent site is two miles ahead and it's 430. It's just not bad at all. The ridge runner that I met did encourage me to arrive at shelters early um, in order to reserve a spot because especially on weekends, and it is a weekend today, it can be hard to get a spot. So she recommended by arriving by like four or five or latest six so that you make sure you get a spot. Because if you arrive at seven, sometimes all the spots are filled. So sometimes I'm like, I want to use all my daylight that I have, but it makes sense to stop early in the whites. Oh yeah, plus I kind of forgot that I'm tired and feel worn out. So it makes sense to do shorter days, but this will be a 10 mile day. So longest day in the white so far. Working on the sharp climb of Garfield now. Again, slow and steady. I need to be careful where I place my feet. And my feet really do hurt right now. They did not recover with the zero day. I'm just toying between taking a break and taking my shoes off and just trying to keep doing one step at a time so I get to the shelter quicker and then can just rest there. And I think I'm leaning towards the latter option. There is so, so much positive in today though. Franconia Ridge was beautiful. I'm so thankful. Even though it was windy, I got to appreciate, we got to appreciate those wonderful, amazing views. I'm sitting down because I couldn't figure out a better way up this rock face and then it turned into a break without even taking my pack off because I just tried to step up onto this rock and then pull my weight up and then I had a shot of pain of some sort in my knee and I went back down and went back to the bottom of this rock face <laughs> like three feet it's not that far but I'm realizing I need to think of different ways to get up these hills rather than just relying on my knees it's really just the steep ones that make you step up at a steep angle that's greater than like 45 degrees or greater than like a three to four foot step. The just uphills that go gradually uphill, I have no, no trouble with at all. Well, these legs won't walk themselves up this mountain. Let's get up this thing. We are coming for you, Garfield. Even when things are painful at times, if you have enough willpower and enough dedication to make something happen, you can make it happen. Whether that be climbing a mountain and getting to the top and not giving up, whether it be in a survival situation where you 
might not think you'll make it out, but you do have enough willpower and strength to summon to make it out. It's like, it'd be more comfortable just sitting down and staying there on a rock right now, but I am I am summoning myself up and over this mountain because I know that's where shelter is. So, huh, this is actually a really nice tent spot there. I'm really tempted if it was legal. I'm going to push on though. I have a big day tomorrow with the twins and Gale Mountain or Gale whatever mountain it is. And there's plenty of time. It's not even five o'clock. So I can take it slow and push it. And I also want to see if I can bag North Twin tomorrow. I'd like to bag North Twin tomorrow because uh, it's really a hike to get up. But already being on South Twin with the AT, it's not that bad of a hike. So I'd like to take that spur to bag that 4K in case I do get really dedicated about bagging all the New Hampshire 4Ks. But back to what I was saying before, believe in yourself. Build yourself up. Encourage yourself to push through whatever you need to do. Sometimes it might be reconciling with a friend or a family member. And it might be very difficult and painful at first. But if you have enough dedication and willpower, you can make it happen. I believe in you. Enough friendly actions in a row will usually reconcile any relationship if it has a chance of being repaired. It might require some patience. <laughs> I didn't intend on eating pine needles there. It might require some patience, but patience is a virtue. Now there's a different angle of Fred Conyer Ridge, viewed from the other side. What an angle. Garfield stands nice and tall, but only 4,400 feet tall. The campsite itself, the shelter, Garfield Ridge Shelter, is only one and a half miles away. It's just one and a half on difficult terrain, so it takes longer. Garfield Pond, beautiful. No easy way to access it, but it's a beautiful pond out here in the wilderness. It is so beautiful out here. The wind feels nice and I'm in the pines now, or the, I always say pines, firs. Garfield Ridge is just up and over the top hat of Garfield. Just on the other side of this mountain, half a mile. Wow, this is the trail. And there's an edge there. So I get to scramble up this now in all fours. Yay, I enjoy it. That's a view of Franconia Ridge right there. Lafayette is there, and then Lincoln, and then Liberty. Or that actually might be Haystack. Liberty might be hidden right now. And we're still climbing. <laughs> Here we go, we're within a quarter mile of the Garfield Ridge Shelter. The summit is right up here. If I can keep my footing right. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. Liberty, Flume, a mountain in the middle there, who knows what that is. And then the summit. Came down from okay, Lafayette. Day, that's for sure. and down there. It was a gorgeous day. And then we're up here. We are summiting Mount Garfield, number seven of the 48. 
4,000 footers. How do we get up there? There's the foundation. That could be a nice shelter from the wind right there. We have reached the summit of Mount Garfield. <laughs> Number seven of New Hampshire's first The tallest one there is South Twin. We get to climb all the way down and all the way back up to the to get to South Twin right there. North Twin is behind it. And just peeking out there is the top of Mount Washington. We've reached the Garfield Trail, Garfield Ridge Campsite, another, another point two. We're descending quite a bit to get to this shelter. Definitely some rocky terrain as we descend down to the shelter. I hear voices. The trail junction is coming. I did fall again coming down Garfield. Kinda twisted my right knee again a little bit, so it hurts again, but it is what it is. We're here at the shelter and going to get ready for the night. Really good water here. It is uphill to the shelter. Point two. Garfield Ridge campsite. Made it. There's a cooking area over there. We have arrived here at the cabin, got our through hiker pass, so it's $10 for the first night. Uh, I have $15 fee, but the through hikers get this card, and then it's also good for a uh, bowl of soup and baked good at the hut. So it, it's good for two weeks. Um, so that's exciting. We're here, and this is the end of day one. Gosh, I'm almost forgetting now. One, one fourteen. I think, I think it's 114. <laughs> and we're continuing on this adventure, continue moving north, could do the twin range tomorrow. If you'd like to follow along for the rest of this AT journey, I invite you to subscribe if you have not done so already. And if you'd like some live updates, you can check out the Instagram as well. Same handles on YouTube, at Stick the Eagle. For now, remember to embrace the journey and happy trails.